I'm very honored to speak in front of such uh, great speakers, and for me it is always a yeah, uh, yeah, opportunity to get out of the everyday business of praxis oriented pragmatic organizational um, situation into actually uh, yeah, this state of mode of reflection in pure form. So uh, please forgive me to I now come back to color. <laughs> and um, I think in what I have prepared, I will connect to certain subjects which actually were already talked about in various um, speeches before. I quote, I always noticed that I work better when I am on holiday. Gabriel Orozco says, it is a more relaxed way of thinking. In fact, a lot of my work happens between work and non-work, between work and leisure, and between mobility and stasis. Following the Mexican artist Gabriel Orozco, one model for creativity is being on holidays. Knowing how to deal efficiently with his own economy of creative flow, Orozco has built for him and his family the ideal vacation house. Analyzing this quote closely, at least for Orozco, it is the space between the two domains, between efficiency-driven life and tight schedules in urbanity on the one hand and an open-ended, aimless state of being in nature on the other hand that opens up some sort of space for creativity. Mihai Chik Sant Mihai, a psychologist who, has, who is best known for his theory of the flow, has extensively written on this in-between st space in which creative output takes place. According to Chik Sant Mihai, people are happy when they are in a state of flow a type of in intrinsic motivation that involves being fully focused on a situation or task. He describes flow as, I quote, being completely involved in an activity for its own sake. The ego falls away, time flies, every action, movement and thought follows inevitably from the previous one, like playing jazz. Your whole being is involved and you're using your skills to the utmost. He concludes that artists and other creative people are not only eager to experience the flow as often as possible, actually all people want to be happy and try to trigger this flow, but they have learned to work with the economy of their own flow. In other words, they have learned to trigger their flow on a regular basis. Furthermore, he points out another talent so-called creative people have, namely the ability to communicate their creative outcome better than others. These characteristics may be found in the quote of Gabriel Orozco, he not only built a house in order to experience the back and forth between work and not work, that he has found to constitute the best way to actually be creative, but he also has understood how to communicate it. Once more I quote Sant Chik Mihai, Creative results from the interaction of a system consisting of three elements. A culture that contains symbolic rules, a person who brings novelty into the symbolic domain, and a field of experts who recognize and validate the innovation. The level of creativity in a given place at a given time does not depend only on the amount of individual creativity, it depends just as much on how well suited the respective domains and fields are to the recognition and diffusion of novel ideas. What makes Sanchik Mia's approach so interesting is the fact that his approach is essentially contextual, pointing out the dependence of individual creativity to domains and fields that nurture and recognize creative outputs. To what degree do models of creat creativity travel? This question put out 
by the organizer of this symposium implies that models can be found, analyzed, taken over and adapted to new and different contexts in time and place. As curator and director of an art institution, I have the honor to invite so-called creative people, artists, to whom I try to be good host, providing space, time, budget, a public, and our services, so to say, different types of mediation of the work they put out to the public. Early in my working life, I had the experience behind the scenes that later led me to a specific series of exhibitions the series was not set out in first place to present artworks itself, but more so, so was thought of a possible catalyst for new process patterns of the artistic work and approach. It was in a group show, Personal Plans, um, when was that, 2002, <laughs> uh, in which, while mounting the show, Two artists, Rita Ackermann and Andro Vekwa, started to communicate through drawing to each other on little sketches. Rita in those times speak only Hungarian, spoke only Hungarian and English, and Andro only Georgian and German. In a show that was concerned with different approaches in drawing, it may not come as a surprise that they both communicated in the only language they had together through drawing. Later, after the show, they became friends and ended up working collaboratively in a series of artists' books. This is one of, an image of one of, of that series. Of course, artists meet each other often in group shows, and this incident is not exclusive at all. Though this in incident makes clear that an exhibition means far more than solely presenting artworks. The exhibition releases various dynamics that may influence an artist's approach successively. Nowadays, one could argue many, if not all, exhibitions are catalysts for new patterns in creative processes. So-called post-studio art since the 70s has changed artistic practices considerably. Today, even if the artist is not considered to be conceptual or working in the tradition of institutional critique, it is more or less self-evident that the works are installed in a specific relation to place and space. Often new site-specific works are made for a certain constellation. Of course, any invitation to present the work provides the artist with some means, time, space, budget, etc., in order to expand her or his practice. Furthermore, one could argue that even the most traditional approach to curate, in which a curator might choose the works and decide how to present them all by himself or herself, could be seen as catalyst. As a result, the artist might see her or his work shed into a new light and, and embraces the experience henceforth, which may result in paths unknown before. Jens Hoffmann, director of the Jewish Museum, recently mentioned in a symposium the, the planned change of their collection policy in the future, only acquiring works that previously have been developed as site-specific or contextual to the existing collection. It would be worth discussing these tendencies in length. For example, what does it mean for some sort of artistic autonomy? how in the future can works of art respond to various different artworks and not only to the already fixed contextual. Last but not least, what does it mean for artistic practice to be meshed with neoliberal financial flows that surely enough are linked to any institution? Coming back to the models of creativity, something fluid is implied by the process of flux. There have been many exhibitions that focused on the process, most famously when Attitude became form in 1969, in which process-oriented art was presented for, not the first, but one of the first time. In those years, not only art itself reflected process, but to no surprise also exhibition formats were developed that mirrored this general interest. For instance, at Kunsthalle Baden-Baden from 68 to 73, a legendary series called 14 by 14 took place in which art's process like character and its references to space was the main focus. The art space there temporarily became an art studio for several weeks. 14 young artists presented their work, only one woman artist at that time which allowed visitors to participate in the becoming of an exhibition. 
With the advent of the post-studio practice, many new exhibition formats were mirroring the new forms of art, ultimately echoing the general interest in or manifestation of societal upheavals in the late 60s and 70s. Only to name here a few information at MoMA in the 70s or I think in any town you could find uh, um, these type of new exhibition formats. For instance, in Basel it was the transformations of all kinds, 1969 at the Kunsthalle and many more. Curiously enough, today this, there is great interest in, these, in this exhibition history, but even the most legendary exhibition, when attitude became form in, in its time, was by no means as appreciated as it is today. The curator Harald Seemann, after all, needed to quit his post. This indicates how conservative institutions were and still are and how firmly the conventions of viewing art are rooted in society. Process-oriented art education, on the other hand, turned out to be much more successful than the process-oriented oriented exhibition formats. Perhaps this is best known in John Baldessari's infamous post-studio class at Cala Arts that took place from the 70s on. With this class, Baldessari operated outside of medium specificity, which at, at that time was a novelty. Important cornerstones in his teaching methods were his field trips that were not yielded to special art sites, but were meant to teach that art can and should happen everywhere. Furthermore, Baldessari focused on the history of contemporary art more through slides projection, projection than through books, he explained. Actually, very much, um, of course, uh, how Katarina just portrayed her own practice. Hmm? Thirdly, also interesting, um, uh, uh, access to information uh, was always a vital point in uh, John's teaching practice. He um, would bring uh, in uh, student, for his students catalogues, and as you did. Huh? So that was a vital, very important uh, thing to do. Needless to say that access to information has changed dramatically. It has become much easier to learn about different art scenes and different places. However, informants are still required in order to be able to sort out today's overload of information. How do these patterns of process manifest and even more importantly, how can an institution trigger the process to happen today? What type of institutional setting is favorable to a situation that can open up new lines of thoughts to the artists themselves? In a series of three exhibitions, I questioned the format of an exhibition as such, asking how an exhibition can not only successfully mediate a body of work or a theme, but rather can become an instrument to invigorate an artistic practice as, as such. For each of these shows, I approached one artist, asking him or her whom they always have wanted to work with. By this, I suggested not necessarily an alternative to their studio space, but I offered a structure in which they possibly could work in ways otherwise not possible. The young art, Czech artist Jan Manchuska chose the work with, to work with Jonas Dahlberg. Christopher Williams teamed up with Matthias Poledna and Annette Kelm came together with Michaela Meise. The exhibitions did not focus on the what, but on the how. The visitor would not so much see artworks, but rather find a setting that gives a glimpse into how particular artists develop ideas, a process-related insight to the becoming of a body of work. I now very briefly introduce you to these shows, thereby pointing out the differences that occurred by the underlying structure to a more, let's say, conventional exhibition in which I would pair, for various reasons, two artists together. In reference to the forthcoming renovation of our spaces at the Bonner Kunstverein, Jonas Dahlberg and Jan Manchuska, 2005, um, uh, formulated their show, the first min which they called the first minute of the rest of a movie. Um, they worked, they reworked our, our um, floor plan fully 
The new out outline introduced a narrative within the space that was activated and augmented by the artworks of both. Both artists are devoted to the idea that language can generate image and vice versa, whereas Dahlberg explores the viewer's standpoint in a space often with slow filmic images, Manchushka deconstructs cognitive processes through language and space. In the main hall, Dahlberg showed two existing video works which were projected over and through also already existing works of Jan Manchushka which he then, for the purpose, adapted in size. So what you see is um, this text piece by Jan Manchushka and over this te text piece the film work of Dahlberg was um, projected. The artists decided literally to superimpose each other's work. How to describe a space in its physical, temporal and cognitive structure was exemplified by superimposing each other's work and projecting them into a carefully thought of architectural new setting. The approach undertaken by Christopher Williams and Matthias Poletna differed a lot. By choosing to leave out their own artworks fully and instead focusing on institutional elements. Being familiar with the artist, this may not come as a surprise. However, I can tell you that this was not the first approach, but one in, in a series, which then in the end uh, was realized. It all began with the observation that the artists happened to detect a small catalogue of the Bonner Kunstverein, in 19, of nine, published in 1972, that in size almost exactly recalled the proportion of our two mobile wall systems. Successes, successively, we were asked by the artists to call the many art institutions nearby in the Rhineland, as the Rhineland is famous for its institutional density, asking them for momentarily unused mobile wall systems we could possibly use for display. We ended up presenting wall systems from the Bundeskunsthalle and Kunstmuseum Bonn, from the Kunstsammlung NRW, the Städtisches Museum Abteilberg Mönchengladbach. Here you see the outline of our space and um, the wall systems um, which um, were carefully put into the space by the artists. Starting from the rear, the most colorful white wall showed traces of a recent show by Lawrence Wiener. The walls became more and more white and clean as visitors viewed the front of the exhibition space. The show could be seen as a quasi-ethnographic research on the very basic element of an exhibition, the wall, that is constructed solely for the purpose to present art mm -hmm. on one hand, and the idea of mobility and flexibility in building up walls for exhibitions. The indifferent white shades, glowing white walls were calling for imagination, former and upcoming shows that would take place on them. Also, a rough map of Rhineland institutions were given by this, by this uh, space. The history of construction and technical information of, of the way of how the mobile walls were constructed were indicated as well. Here you see our own mobile wall system had um, captions which were uh, mainly focused on technical information on how walls are built. Only one image actually was introduced, which the artists have bought from the image bank, two colorful, beautiful and at the same time funny looking, three actually uh, funny looking parrots. Annette Kelm and Michaela Meise in their show Hallo Aber, which took place in 2012, perhaps played most closest with the idea of the studio. They used the large hall. Oh no. Yeah. They used the, the large hall to give space for the dialogue, whereas in the cabinet they presented a group of works from different time periods connecting loosely to the discourse given form in the hall. 
They too developed their first ideas by particular observations close to the Kunstverein, namely the wall paintings by, a, by an advertisement uh, painter executed in the old style as murals. This led them to the idea to treat the hall as the membrane of artistic exchange, asking him to paint specific images in different scale and position. Viewers came across Gainsborough paintings, a record cover, paisley scarves, or book covers on pho photo theory, imagery that they, the, the two artists, would talk about in their studio, motifs or structures that were of interest to them and informed their work on various levels. As with Poledna and Williams and their two parrots, three parrots, excuse me, here two, the, the figure of the two was to be detected. The heterogeneous character of the images was leveled to a uniform stain, state by the handiwork of the billboard painter. The choice underlines the arbitrary and transient dimension of these pictures and recalls characteristics of a dialogue. A conversation is something ephemeral, altering and evolving with every intervention. The space was given a rhythm by flipping over some images, generating a discursive flow in the space, whereas the pillars were painted in the tones of, of CMYK color models. Recent and older works of, by the artists were to be found in the center space. Oh, here's some more images. Yeah, this is the center space. They partly related to the elements in the hall, as the artists will not stop their exchange with the end of the show. Hallo Abba can be regarded as a snapshot of an on ongoing conversation that celebrates the comprehensive and multiple nature of the picture per se. The title of the show, Hallo Abba, implied a speaker and a listener. At the same time, it indicated the ambiguity towards the counterpart, hinting towards the artists in dialogue or the public. For the poster, um, for the post, where is it now? Poster, the artists developed an image together by taking elements from their own practice and putting them together. Wooden round forms of Michaela were complemented by paper hats Annette often uses in her work. After the show in Bonn, they developed another show on their amicable grounds at the Galerie Meyer Kainer. Again, it resulted in a poster made together. This is then the continuation of their working together. To summarize, obviously, I only quickly gave you a very brief introduction in some of the major points. All three projects were working against the individual gesture. They emphasized lines of thoughts in their artistic approach more than actual artworks without giving up the format of an exhibition. The projects may also be read, as Helmut Draxler said in the case of Poledna and Williams, an exemplary attempt by these artists to escape the rigid ways of thinking in exhibition business. In a following show of Christopher Williams, um, Christopher uh, presented, the, for instance, the documentation of the Bonn exhibition, and that was my mistake before, here. Within the new show, within his new show in vitrines, how he often uses, perhaps you can recognize again our mobile wall there. All three shows, all three shows differed from other shows in organizational and temporal structures. Once I approached an artist and he or she showed interest in the undertaking, my role as curator shifted in that sense that I was less involved in the development than at other times. Since the true partners were the two artists, I was solely a truly trusting host. Of course, we did have discussion in varying stages of development, but when two people collaborate, my role was strictly the one of the excited and curious listener of the outcome of the conversation. Secondly, the time span for preparation was much longer than usual, essentially leaving it almost up to the artists when they were ready. A dialogue, conversation and its outcome is not to be planned. So here you also see um, 
of course, this causes lots of institutional problems if you can't properly schedule. More than other exhibitions, these shows were not about the what, but about the how, to the result and manifestation of a creative process in form of a particular artworks, but about the becoming of, about the patterns of process within artistic practice. At the same time, they kept with the idea of an exhibition in the sense that they were not to confuse with the idea of a laboratory or studio situation that might have been seen in the light of a publicly accessible studio visit. A last very short example I want to introduce to this discussion as it re-emphasizes a lot of what I have mentioned before. Here I talk about an artistic practice more and not so much about the, about the institutional or curatorial side, even though it is partly involved too. Um, it is a piece by Yorgos Sapuntzis that took shape within a group show which was concerned with the subject, the city of Bonn. This piece started with the, in the afternoon in the old cemetery of Bonn, where we have invited school children to take part. First, the children were given a short tour on the cemetery, cemetery where they learned about famous people of Bonn and, of course, the topic of death, which perhaps with kids is not um, yeah, such a common topic to discuss. We had the permission to play on the main lawn in the midst of the otherwise silent place. For the first two hours, Yorgos played all sorts of games with the children, strengthening the bonds of the group. The games were interrupted by a picnic. Again, here is the kitchen or the, the, the mensa, um, and uh, which were interrupted by a picnic, at which time the children followed Yorgos with his activities eagerly. At some point, the artist brought along some elements made up from colored fabrics that span around aluminum poles and started to build forms out of it. For the first hours, he had given the children instructions what to do, involving them in games that essentially were about building up a sense for the community they formed together. Then, all of a sudden, he let them play freely. As they were prepared well from the previous activities with Yorgos, there was no break out in total chaos. But on the contrary, with heightened concentration, they started to build their own houses of, with these elements. This was the exact aim of the artist, to set one's own creativity free with the others. After a while, we gathered again, took the elements to the Kunstverein, where Yorgos installed them with a slide projector that showed some of the images of the afternoon. Sapunzi's practice essentially activated creative action from others. Even though everything seems improvised, most of the elements are prepared and thought of in advance in order to create a certain space with festive and ritual character to give the participants a marked out space in which they feel accepted, good, taken seriously. From the institution it asks extra trust in the artist and also to take a risk in that sense that the outcome again is not to plan in advance. Also artists also, artists from this uh, generation, for instance, I just mentioned one now, Tobias Madison, who currently prepares a show at PS1 that consists in actually taking over the educational department for a period of time, can be mentioned at, at this place. I would like to end by mentioning two institutional cases that recently have started to work distinctively different from the known models and who embrace artistic production and, in this sense, channel creativity perhaps newly. In Berlin, only recently, Praxis has opened an institution, association from my knowledge, that presents exhibitions as cycles and displays, older works, collaborations, performances, unfinished businesses, failed ideas, archives and other material to allow for the slow surfacing of recurring themes, materials and methods, as well as contradictions and productive disruptions across a body of work. 
In the case of a recent exhibition with Judith Hopf and Farke Pisano, they have, they have three openings in which the presentation each time changes over a period of one and a half months. Of course, one could argue that a very good survey show can do the same thing. However, these relatively young artists cannot be seen necessarily in this scale at any museum yet, and the very experimental character of the institution's program is promising. A new, another newly established institution, it is being launched in, only in summer 2014, so this summer, is worth mentioning in this round. And uh, the guests from New York are, I'm happy to hear from them how, what actually it is, because at this point I think nobody can properly say. Um, it is called um, New Inc., founded by the New Museum in New, in New York last year. And I quote now from their press release. It is, quote, the first museum-led incubator, a platform that furthers the museum's ongoing commitment to new art and new ideas. Um, it's along, adjacent to the museum building, there is 11,000 square feet dedicated to workspace, labs, social areas, again, social areas, and event space. New Inc. is a response to ongoing changes in cultural production. It is shared workspace designed to support a new breed of creative professionals as they explore new ways of working and building their practice. Members will represent an inspiring group of peers and potential collaborators from a variety of disciplines within the broad cross-section of art, technology and design. Possible fields of Fields of focus include visual arts, web, mobile development, architecture, animation, product design, game development, fashion, experimental music, alternative education, digital culture, art and tech startups, etc. Of course, this program is not for free, um, but you can read the clip and apply uh, to take part if you can afford it. I think these institutional thrusts stem partly also from the ever more rapidly growing pace in visual arts on the global scale in which the fear of arbitrariness starts to creep in. The quests for heightened relevance and the desire to downscale speed, may, skeet, speed, <laughs> scale speed may play also into nurturing these ideas. Especially the fact that there are more and more artists getting involved in these areas with their own practices reinforces the assumptions. And I end with John Baldessari's words. I quote him, I don't believe art can be taught, but you can make art making easier by providing space. I am sure John is right with mentioning the providing space. It is up to each time and place to define this very space newly. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Christina Weg, for introducing um, a few models of creativity in the actual production um, of contemporary art. And uh, you started with the example or with the model that um, Gabriel Orozco um, proposed and um, lives through um, that uh, you need um, a rhythm between uh, work and not work or um, the normal density uh, of uh, your daily life and then a period where you distance yourself from this normal rhythm and uh, 
I think uh, it's not by chance that this place uh, which Gabriel Orozco uh, chooses or built himself up is a place which is in uh, contact with nature. And um, to start our conversation and bring also uh, the models that you have um, shown to us uh, back to our um, dialogue about the Black Mountain College. Um, I think this um, uh, the, sit the, the situativeness of the Black Mountain College in uh, the mountains of North Carolina uh, out of uh, um, uh, city uh, area uh, played a crucial role and um, do you think that the placing of uh, such a holiday or not work situation in nature is an important factor for artists? Well, I wouldn't dare to generalize <laughs> now but uh, I can only um, uh, recommend uh, to, to uh, read a little bit on the theory of flow um, uh, of um, Mihai Sant, Chick Mihai, because there he describes um, various, I mean he did tons of interviews with so-called creative people, Nobel Prize um, I don't know, winners of fit from physics to all, all regions, not only now the, the arts. And what I found so interesting is that all of these people had found um, moments how to, how to get this tension between, mm -hmm. and, and it's funnily often um, activities which we do half automatically, which then these people more or less I'm sure many of you know that too. <laughs> you can detect your own technology in that sense. So somebody spoke about he goes and drives on the highway, mm -hmm. uh, driving because he do it. It's um, and then because he knows if he stays in office or in the laboratory or in the studio, it's not going to happen. Or gardening, cooking, um, activities which are um, uh, yeah, which are not involving a uh, clear like f mm -hmm. full-time thought which you have what you do automatically to <coughs> have these different time spans or uh, different modes of mm -hmm. concentration mm -hmm. so it's so, uh, i don't think that all artists need to <laughs> see nature in order to yeah but it's a, a reference to the situation at the black mountain college which yeah. uh, was i mean it's really a very strong factor that uh, it was a, a place which was really in the mountains and uh, um, that uh, for a lot of the artists that were visiting the college um, they were going back and forth between new york city or uh, then the place in uh, North Carolina uh, and so I think the contrast between uh, this highly dense um, atmosphere and uh, situation in the city and um, then this uh, completely uh, quiet area uh, in the mountains um, can play a role and probably in the Black Mountain College uh, case uh, did play a role. Um, next to the factors that this allowed uh, to do the um, farming and gardening uh, which they did for their own surviving um, in a time of uh, uh, also economic difficulty for the college so it was also out of necessity mm -hmm. to do the farming and uh, provide yourself with food um, and then uh, in the presentation of the three uh, shows where you had invited an artist to choose uh, uh, an artist to work with and to start a process, um, a cooperation or a dialogue um, to come up with a common project um, goes back to uh, what we were studying in, in the Black Mountain College where uh, there was a lot of um, situations where, which um, gave space 
for uh, such collaborative practices. Um, we have heard about the untitled event where each of the participants could do his or her action and then this came together in maybe or probably a time structure, uh, not only a space. Um, and uh, so I thought it was interesting that you spoke about this time factor in these uh, collaborative um, projects and that this time factor um, was one of the elements that uh, was not to be foreseen. Mm -hmm. uh, so did you really um, wait for the artist to say we are ready to now come up uh, with an exhibition in this space and um, how long beforehand uh, did you know this in the three cases to build your other program around it? Um, I can say that uh, the first two partners I more or less asked almost at the same time mm -hmm. and um, Jan and Jonas came about after I think two years after I had asked, and mm -hmm. Christopher and Matthias, it took longer, and at some point I thought it's not going to happen. Um, it's, and then it happened still, mm -hmm. so it was just a following up a process. Um, I tried, I think in the Kunstverein I have the uh, ability to be more flexible. The larger the institution it gets, the less flexibility there is, which is again not favoring than such such uh, projects which with an open end, huh? with, uh, and so um, makes it easier. So the 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 final decision you took to um, start this three part project mm -hmm. um, was it uh, in the first hand that you were interested in taking up a different role as a curator by, let's say, taking one step back and have the two participants uh, cooperate? Or was it more that you were interested in the outcome of what the two artists uh, come up with for an exhibition, um, the result of which you could not foresee? Um, I, I was just interested in, yeah, in questioning what an exhibition can do other than solely mm -hmm. present work. Um, uh, I, again, I wouldn't differentiate, it's with us too. Um, there's certain people you think they do such great work. Um, perhaps teaming up can be inspiring, perhaps it can bring you to some new standpoints and you continue afterwards differently, hopefully. Or, yeah, that's yeah. How, how often um, um, more or less perhaps also lots of coincidences play into, into, uh, into these things. Um, it happens, so I, I thought as institution to actually give people the chance to, 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 yeah, to do something which otherwise wouldn't be so possible, so much possible. Mm -hmm. Giving, giving a space and giving a time. Well, in this case, uh, first of all, and yeah. giving the opportunity mm -hmm. to work with somebody mm -hmm. who you always wanted to work with. Yes, yeah. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, and, uh, and yeah, of course, as curator, you would never superimpose works. And it was actually really funny because uh, the gallerists didn't know what to do with these pieces. <laughs> That's interesting, yes. Yeah, because it was totally falling out of the system. Mm -hmm. and also, for the audience, it was not so easy these projects because I think for, for the audience who knew the artist's work as such, it was fine, but not necessarily for an, art, for an audience which um, didn't know the artist before because it was more or less uh, more about how, uh, more showing the process or lines of thoughts than actual uh, yeah, work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, I mean, it's uh, it's a different case than um, presenting um, two artists that have a collaborative praxis yeah, anyway, like uh, yeah. Arnold Reiner and Dieter Roth, yeah. uh, for example. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, it's very yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a format that uh, you start a process. Yeah. Yeah. And also, um, I was very careful. 
It uh, was actually an interesting question, Anina, I mean, I asked Katarina before about uh, whether you ask the students that you are allowed to show the photos. Um, I didn't take pictures when the artists were actually mm -hmm. discussing. I, I was sometimes with them, sometimes not, of course. Um, I think it's very problematic nowadays that lots of institutions um, have these little video clips on mm -hmm. the home pages mm -hmm. about how artists mount the show. Mm -hmm. I would never ever. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I think it's a very intimate space when an exhibition uh, happens, mm -hmm. when it takes place. I think it's wrong to show that to an audience. I think it's like uh, a studio and uh, how exhibitions take place is not, it, it's not a public thing unless the artist is giving yeah, this out yeah, as an yeah. artistic yeah. practice or mm -hmm. a statement. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, happening and question, you know, um, I can understand the curiosity of people, of course, to, to see into these processes. Yeah, but absolutely, I would uh, yeah. um, decide the same way. Uh, are there questions to Christina Weg? Um, you mentioned this um, new institution by the new museum, the new museum incubator in the end of your presentation. I couldn't resist thinking of what Yael Lehmann said at the beginning, mm -hmm. just uh, to be very critical of mm -hmm. um, the way creativity is used today. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also had to think of um, how public institutions, mainly in the Nordic countries, are changing at the moment, so that um, the funding has to be divided between art and um, the creative industries, between art, design, and um, also architecture. And um, so that there is this, this vicinity of um, uh, art and yeah, creative industries produced within this institution. And um, I also I only read this press mm -hmm. release that you were also quoting from, so I, I can't say anything more specific about this institution, but um, reading and, and now hearing again about it from you makes me like a bit suspicious of the agenda of this institution and yeah, I, I, well, I don't know what's your... Yeah, well, I would, I would be, I would, I see the same, I see it the same, I mean, I'm also, uh, makes suspicion, suspicious about it, that's why I'm, I'm very, I mean, I know that some good artists are taking part now, so <laughs> I'm still curious, but it, I think it was two days ago when I read uh, even about new investors in the new museums, which mm -hmm. makes even more suspicious. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, I just uh, so I think the 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 first um, example of what praxis mm -hmm. is less less suspicious, and uh, definitely we can understand and know much better the outcome. Mm -hmm. In the case of the new museum, yeah, it's a big, big, uh, I mean, already the name they gave themselves mm -hmm. is, it's either very sympathetic because it's just super honest, <laughs> or otherwise, uh, yeah, it's double bound. Do you have another question? Um, just two quick remarks. I found it very interesting. Thank you for your talk. Just two quick remarks which try to find back what you exposed to the situation at Black Mountain College as well. Um, the first one I, I found it fascinating that you started your talk with the notion of flow and process and fluidity, and that of course um, makes us um, think of Charles Olson, who in the beginning of the 50s wrote this uh, manifest projective verse in which it is precise in the idea of one perception must immediately lead to another perception. So for me, this is kind of a already notion of flow in the 50s, mm. uh, which was um, propagated, you could say, at Black Mountain as well. So this I found a very interesting correspondence with your mm. talk. And the second thing was if your um, talk's title is Exhibition as a Catalyst for New Process Patterns, uh, this makes me think, of course, of Rauschenberg's black paintings because actually the first showing of the black paintings was at Black Mountain College in 51-52. We just have a leaflet which announces the exhibition. We do not have identified 
identify photographs of the exhibition, but we do have photographs of his staging of his black paintings, and these photographs are fascinating because even though we don't know if they are from the exhibition, they show that he um, used the space of the environment, the college, the corridors, the frames of the doors to uh, uh, correlate with his black paintings even before he did combined paintings. And so that made me think that within a Rauschenberg exhibiting at Black Mountain College, the idea of using an exhibition for generating new process patterns seems to have been uh, practiced already there. It's interesting. I, of course, <laughs> didn't have this historic uh, connection to it. But OK. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for your interesting talk. Um, I was uh, just there when you talked about the German project. I was astonishingly um, impressed by this, uh, with the works again, uh, what they were building up, uh, mm -hmm. reminded me also again of the workshop by Wagner Stiftung. Yeah, yeah, of course, uh, this morning too, actually. And, um, so um, I was wondering in all those uh, w uh, exhibitions you mentioned before that uh, um, all those artists uh, um, introduced a, a very specific notion of uh, an architectural dimension they put into the, so they were dealing mm -hmm. in a specific way with the architecture of the museum and just architectural devices and so on. And um, so when you were talking about providing space and designing spaces for, which in a way uh, contribute to create this very specific um, entrance to a, a aesthetic experience. Um, I would uh, again like also to introduce perhaps or if that works together for you with the notion of what you call the improvised. Uh, so as architecture and as also choreography, as we saw this morning with Cunningham, were both as art practices with a very strong sense also of making prescriptions, making drawings, uh, making something which then leads you to, to something which then comes out of it. So uh, with, with drawings, notations, uh, prescriptions, um, so the kind of uh, score, perhaps to call it like this, like it was a practice and after Cage and after the Jetson choreographers, um, they were working with these kind of scores, which not only uh, were um, assigning a written practice then anymore, but also the um, perhaps the specific um, spatial, uh, spatial temporal arrangement of specific objects which could uh, then um, designate as a score as well. So um, are those, those practices, uh, the architectural as well as the choreographical, in that way contributing in the exchange to, to um, create something of that what you could call the, what you then call the unforeseeable, in a way but uh, relying on a very strong compositional um, um, idea. So bringing together the improvisation with composition ideas, um, um, yeah. I'm not, I'm not fully sure whether I know, understood, but to be honest, I, these three shows are actually never presented this way now, one after the other. <laughs> and so it's actually interesting what you come, out, uh, come up about, uh, never thought about. Of course, all three artists were very much uh, looking at our space and more or less set, setting up different parameters yeah, for some sort of playground or in which perhaps it has something to do with that uh, if you want to make more visible process, pros, the process itself that you start to think more into yeah, choreography and, and uh, how space is outlined. Mm -hmm. I, I, didn't think, I didn't think about this enough long to actually fully reply to it. Um, more questions? No. So then, I thank you very much for thank you. being here, and we get the next speaker.